I am all about making life easier and one of the ways I do that is through iPhone shortcuts. Today I am sharing some of my favorite shortcuts that I use on a daily basis from built-in widgets to easy shortcuts you can set up right away. I honestly swear by some of these to make using Notion on my phone just so much easier but some of these are also just great to know that your phone can do as well. All of these are super simple to get set up, so do not worry about any long, complicated automations. Let's jump in. Okay, before I hop into my shortcuts, I wanna give you a quick overview of my setup. So on my first page here, I kind of have more of my widgets, my Notion widgets that I can access, as well as my social media to access. And then over here on the next page is more of my personal area of things. So I have a couple other widgets as well as my shortcuts and then more of the apps that I access on my personal time. So the first thing I wanna actually look at is my Notion widgets and I have a couple. First off, I have my Notion calendar showing here. I have gone in and deselected certain calendars within the app to make sure that I am seeing the most important events on the front page here but I do really like to have the full view of the month so I can see everything that's going on for that month, as well as then my really important things that I need to know that are on my calendar, like meetings and things like that. Now this is actually a smart stack, so I have a couple other Notion widgets here. One are my favorite pages. So these are the ones that I'm gonna access a lot and very frequently, and I wanna make sure they're easy to get to. So I have my daily planning, my life hub, and my family dashboard right here that I can easily click to if I need to. I have also found it really helpful to have the jump back in widget here too. And that's because if I am on my laptop working on something specific in Notion, and then I wanna pull it up on my phone, I can actually come here to the jump back in. It will actually pull up what you are working in at the moment and it'll help you get to that page a lot quicker. So this is a really helpful one to have as well. And then below that, my other Notion widgets that I have here are specific pages. So I can just flip through this full stack and see very specific pages that I knew I'd wanna access a lot from my phone. And it is really, really helpful to have those here and available on my front page. And I actually really like the little flip through option here because I think it just makes it fun. But then I'm also not taking up a ton of room on my homepage with all these different widgets of different Notion pages. So if you don't have widgets set up like this, I highly recommend setting those up and then also make use of those smart stacks here to save you room with these widgets so that you're not just throwing a, a ton of different widgets onto your homepage. I also talk about these widgets a little bit more in my Notion mobile video but I want to quickly show you how you can set these up. If you get into the edit portion of your home screen here, click on edit and add widget. You can then search for Notion and then this will bring up these different widgets that I was just talking about. And then you can go ahead and pop those in there and create a smart stack from there by just holding them over each other. Now, jumping into the iOS shortcuts app a little bit more, I absolutely love setting these up and I use them for a couple of different things pretty frequently. One is to actually set timers. So in this middle shortcuts stack that I have right here, I actually have two different shortcuts, one for a start timer and one for my sourdough, which is very specific. It is a 30 minute timer because that is the time it takes me to have a break in between my stretch and folds. So what I will do is I will do my first stretch and fold. I will come to my phone. I will just go ahead and tap the sourdough right here and it immediately starts a 30 minute timer for me. I'm gonna turn that off because I do not need that going right now, but that is the quickest way for me to get a 30 minute timer going. However, there are plenty of times where I don't need 30 minutes. I need a more specific amount of time. So I also have a shortcut here for just starting a normal timer. And what it does is it asks me how long I need the timer to be when I click on it. So from here, I can go ahead and set that. Maybe it is a 15 minute timer instead of a 30 minute timer, anything like that. And then when you hit done, it will go ahead and start a brand new timer for you. So if we take a quick look at the shortcut setup right here, we can see that this is literally just using the clock app that is native on the phone and you set a timer for 30 minutes specifically. 
Now, if you want one that asks you, if we go into it, this one, it actually has start timer for duration. And what you have here is it asks you every time. And so that's why it allows me to put in that specific amount. Now, jumping back to Notion, there actually is a native Notion shortcut that allows you to add new pages into Notion. And this is a huge game changer. So I actually have two set up on my phone. These are two that I frequently access. One is to make a new task and one is to make a new random thought. So the way that this works is that when you click on these specific shortcuts, they will prompt you with information. So with my random thought specifically, if I click on that one, it's going to ask me to add a title. So I can call this one a new random thought. It'll also ask for the body of the page. So what happens with this one? is it allows you to put the title in and then it lets you to put something into the page. So typically this is where I will actually put the random thought that I am having. And because of the way I have my random thoughts database set up, I highly recommend checking out my Notion tour if you're curious about this. I can basically just go in because this is going to assign it as something that needs to be reviewed on my end. So I just go ahead and press done that goes into my random thoughts database and it's something that I will go back and review later. I don't have to deal with it right now at all. However, with my tasks, I typically want to go ahead and do a little bit of categorization with those right away. So what I have for this one is if I press on the new task, it will ask me to add a title for a new task. And then if I press done, what it actually does is it opens up that page in my notion. So now we have my new task right here. Now the way I have my system set up for my tasks, again, check out my Notion tour, is that I can basically leave this and then deal with it later if I want to. But what I like to do is I at least like to come down and go ahead and choose a template for it. So if it's a personal task or a business task or whatever it was that I was thinking when I wanted to add this in, I go ahead and choose that template. It's gonna give it a little icon and a category and then I can let this sit if I need to, or I can go ahead and add in more details about it right now. So heading back to our shortcuts app, let's take a look at the new random thought. Again, this is looking at the Notion app itself. So when you're searching for actions here, you can just search for these apps and then it'll give you a list of different things that you can do in Notion. So what I do is I usually choose one of these options that are already created for us just to make things easy. And the ones that I use the most are create a document without opening, which is the one I did here for my random thoughts, or create an open a page, which is what I did for my tasks. So for this one, again, we're just creating that page. It is not gonna open for us. So it allows me to put in the text that I want it to put in each time for both the title and the body here. And then it will go ahead and add that to my database for me. Now, if I go to my new task and take a look at that one, I have actually skipped the body. So I just put the text into the title. And that's because if I put something in the body of my page, it takes away those template options from me. So I really want to be able to go in and apply a template to it right away. So all I do is I give it the title, whatever the new task is going to be, and then it skips the body and it opens the task for me. So I can go ahead and apply that template and add any additional information that I need to from there. Now, another set of shortcuts that I like to use aside from my timers and aside from my Notion shortcuts is for my time tracking. This is something I just recently have kind of started trying out a little bit more I had an app recommended to me. It's called Session and it works very specifically with iOS. So just to show you what it is, if we pop this open right here, it allows you to track your time in these different areas. So I have ones set up for YouTube and content creation and admin things, client work and business projects. I might add more to this later, but right now this is what I have to begin with. And then you can start a session for a certain amount of time, or you can just go ahead and let it go and kind of see how long you end up taking on things. But it is kind of like a Pomodoro tracker to help you spend only a certain amount of time on certain things. But again, you can also analyze what you are spending your time on because if we go to the calendar here, 
it will actually tell you the time chunks. So I did one this morning and then I haven't done one for the rest of the day, but it did uh, show up the one that I did this morning here. And then you can essentially look at the calendar and see where you are spending your time. I am very intrigued by this and I want to do more of it. I literally just got this though. And so what I did is I set up some different automations because this app actually has quite a few within the automation app that you can easily choose from. So these actually live over here in my little side page. So I have one to start a new session, one to stop a session, one to pause a session, and one to abandon a session. So what I ended up doing for the start a new session, because if we take a look at the shortcuts and look at the options that session actually gives us, you're gonna see that it only lets you choose the categories like pre-selected essentially. So you can't really decide at the moment what type of session you're going to be starting and i didn't really want an automation for each one of these i was like this is going to be too much so what i ended up doing was i instead created a new session which you can set an intention which is pretty cool so i set my intention in this little text uh, blob right here and then it starts a general one for me but then i also added another step here to go ahead and open the app and so as soon as you open the app you have the option to change the session type right then and there so let's take a look at this and see how it runs if i go ahead and press this it will say what is your intention i could say i am filming a video right now and then i can say how long i want the session to be as well for this one, I'm probably gonna spend 10 more minutes on this or somewhere in there, so we'll go ahead and do that. And then it's going to go ahead and open that for me. And it is set to be general, but I can go ahead and switch it over to YouTube. So now I have my session going and I can let it go in the background. If I need to come to my automations over here, I can either stop it, pause it, or abandon it and it will go ahead and do that for me. So let's just say abandon this specific session and then it's going to stop it and clear it out for me. I will also say you can get pretty fancy with this too. So if I get back to the session app and go into my settings and go to shortcuts here, it actually has shortcuts that you can create that'll do something automatically. So the way that this works is that you name your shortcut inside of the shortcuts app. So literally where this says session, you would name it session underscore start. And then anytime a session is started, it's going to do a certain thing. So you get to set what that is inside of the app. I haven't really thought of anything that I want that to do yet, but I think that's pretty cool because you can have it start uh, the session. You can have it end the session here. At the pause, it can do something specific. At an unpause, it can do something specific. But what is kind of cool about that is if you want to use this to turn on a focus mode, for example, you can totally do that all automatically because this app actually is like built in with the Shortcuts app. So it's pretty cool. So this is definitely something I'm gonna be playing around more with myself. If you are looking for a Pomodoro tracker or a time tracker, this is going to be a cool one for you to check out. Now, inside the Shortcuts app, we also have automations. And so these are a little bit different than Shortcuts because Shortcuts, you can kind of think of them like Notion buttons. You're gonna press it and it's gonna do something. Whereas automations are going to happen automatically based on a trigger, kind of like our database automations would. So I have two kind of fun automations for you. One is that when my driving focus turns on, I actually have it open my Spotify app because typically if I'm getting in the car, I'm going to want to listen to music or something like that, like a podcast. So what it does is as soon as it connects to the car, it's actually opening the Spotify app for me on my end and that makes it a lot easier. So if I have my phone open when I get in the car, it's just gonna automatically go to Spotify and I don't have to try to find the app and finagle it and you know, that whole getting yourself set up before you have to leave, it just makes that so much quicker. So if you use the iPhone focuses that they allow you to set up, you can actually have these automations doing things in the background every time a focus turns on or turns off. And that's kind of a cool trigger 
to look for here too. The other one is for a low battery mode. Now you can set this up in your settings to automatically become low power mode after I think like 10% or something like that. But if you have a battery that's a little bit older and it's maybe draining a little faster than you want it to, you can have it set up whenever. So I actually have mine set so that when the battery level falls below 25%, it automatically sets it to low power mode. So you can actually go ahead and finagle this a little bit more the way you want it to be. If you want it to be equals 25%, it'll go ahead and turn that on. You can also ask it to confirm with you that you want it to turn it on, but I just want it to run immediately. I don't even really care that it notifies me. If my battery level goes below 25%, I just want it to go ahead and set low power mode. So that's what it's going to do in this specific automation. And so if you find yourself running out of battery a little bit more frequently than you would like to, this might be kind of a cool automation for you to add. These shortcuts have made such a difference when using my phone because not only am I going through less steps to accomplish tasks, but I'm also spending less time on my phone because I can get things done fast. I am definitely going to be experimenting with some more complex shortcuts in the future to see what more I can do. So if you want a part two, let me know down below in the comments. Until then, if you want even more tips and tricks on how to use Notion to the max on your phone, be sure to check out this video next. I will see you in the next one.